Today, I want to talk about my favorite books of 2021. During this past year, I've been reading many books, but only a few of them have really had an impact in my life and the way I think. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my top reads of 2021, so hopefully you can get some inspiration for your 2022 reading list. Let's get started. First book on the list, we have Deep Work by Cole Newport. This is one of Cole Newport's most popular books. And let me tell you, there's a reason for it. The main idea of this book is that deep work is actually one of the most valuable currencies of modern world. Years ago, we used to work in factories doing mechanic work that didn't require a lot of cognitive power. But nowadays, the work that we do is more focused on mastering hard concepts and produce not only at a great speed, but also at a great quality. But surprisingly, even though deep work is becoming increasingly valuable, it's also becoming increasingly rare because it's now easier than ever to get distracted thanks to our phones, email and constant notifications. So the reason you want to read this book is that there's now this huge opportunity to be that person that overcomes these distractions and thrives in this new society. This book will teach you exactly how to do that. Next on the list, we have The Third Door by Alex Banayan. The whole concept of this book is based on the idea that success is like a nightclub. There are always three ways to get inside. The first door is the main entrance where people wait in a line, hoping to get in. Then there's the second door. This is the VIP entrance where celebrities and billionaires sneak in. But there's always a third door. It's the entrance where you have to jump out of line, run down the alley, bang on the door a hundred times, climb over the dumpster, crack open the window, sneak through the kitchen, and get in whatever way you can. I have to say that this book is a great, great story. It's so cool that it's even hard to believe that it's real, but it is. Honestly, since reading this book, I've been trying to find this third door wherever I go, no matter if it's work-related or personal stuff, I'm always on the hunt for this third door. One example that comes to mind is that time I made a video about Matt Davella's book recommendations and he commented on it. In case you don't know, Matt is one of my favorite online creators and many people would love to get his attention. He literally has more than 3 million subscribers on YouTube. So the main path that people follow in order to get his attention is usually sending him a DM or maybe mentioning him in a tweet. That would be the equivalent of waiting in a line hoping to get into the club. The second method is the VIP entrance. If The Rock were to mention Matt in a tweet, be sure he would answer in seconds. And then there was me who went out of her way to make a whole 10 minute video, crossing my fingers hoping to get his attention. That's the third door and it worked. Third on the list, we have The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. So in this book, the author realizes while she's on the bus that she's happy, but not as happy as she could be. I think many of us can relate to this feeling of being incredibly privileged and healthy, but still there's something missing. We still feel we could be a bit happier, right? In her book, Gretchen walks us through her journey working on her happiness project. This project lasted one year and every month she focused on improving one particular area of her life. Something that I really loved about this book is that in order to become happier, she doesn't do anything crazy, you know? She doesn't move to another country and she doesn't leave her family behind in order to become a monk or anything like that, you know? She acknowledges that happiness doesn't really come from external factors, but from within. So the goal here is that regardless of your situation, you can take small actions in order to be happier. Something that I really loved about this book is that it's mostly based on her personal experience. And I think there's something to be said about learning from other people's experience rather than just reading a manual or something like that. Because you can also get a glimpse of her difficulties, what she was struggling with and how she overcame all that. It made me even think about making my own happiness project. So yeah, really great read overall. Next one is on the topic of race. The book is White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. So if you're a white person watching this video, you should definitely read this book. Most people will be triggered by the content of this book because it's literally like a bucket of ice cold water thrown at your face, but it's so, so necessary. I won't be spending too much time talking about this book because I'm not black and you should be listening to black people, not me. But this book brilliantly explains how to ameliorate our racist patterns and start listening to black people. Really recommend this one. Next on the list, we have Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frank. In his book, Viktor narrates his experiences in concentration camps during World War II. Before entering the camp, Viktor was a neurologist doing his research. And so in his book, instead of focusing solely on his own experience, he's more focused on explaining how the everyday struggles of camp life affected his mental state 
and the one of his mates. At the end of his book, he also talks about his theory, logotherapy, which is based on the belief that human nature is motivated by the search for a life purpose. This book was tremendously inspiring to me. Something that I found really interesting was reading how he managed to stay positive despite living some of the most horrific situations. Next on the list, we have When by Daniel Pink. This book is all about the science of timing and what different studies have shown in terms of how to time our days and our lives. I know you're probably thinking, why should I even care about time? Is this actually going to be helpful for me? And bear with me, I never thought that timing would have such a great impact in my life. After reading this book, you'll learn things like at what time you're most creative, when you should do an interview, and when you should make important decisions. Timing plays such a huge role in our success that we should do everything we can in order to stack the deck in our favor. I honestly think that this book is relevant to everyone. Next, we have The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. This book focuses on the strategy of gaining huge rewards from very small and seemingly insignificant actions. The compound effect works both ways. It can also lead to ruin if the habits are bad. It's all based on this simple formula. Small choices plus consistency plus time equals significant results. This means that the small decisions that you make every day will determine whether you'll be successful or fail at a certain thing. This is what your future will look like if you continue making your default choices. And this is what it will look like if you make conscious decisions consistently over a long period of time. This book was really great to understand how my daily actions shape my future. After reading this book, I've turned some of my life goals into daily habits that will lead me to great results over time. One of them is working out every day. Because of the nature of my job, I spend most of my days sitting on a desk. And on top of that, I wasn't working out consistently. If I had continued down that path, I know that in 20 or 30 years time, I would be regretting looking at myself being like, what happened here? Without realizing that this has actually been cooking slowly over the years and years and years until reaching that point. Now I work out every single day, so I make sure that in 20 years time, I'll still be fit and healthy. Last on the list, we have Still Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. This is a must read for anyone doing creating work. Reading this book was such a relief. I feel like people that make videos like I do or other types of creative work have this constant pressure of having to be original and make something that has never been done before. This is an incredible pressure to put on oneself as a creator, and it's not even realistic. Everything has already been done before. It's almost impossible for you to come up with something that is completely original. In the best case scenario, it will have tons of influence from other creators' work. So why is this book important? This book gives you permission to copy your hero's work and use it as a springboard to find your own unique style. Of course, this is not about just copying and taking ownership of work that is not yours. You should always make sure you give proper credit to the authors of the work and make your own version of it. One of my favorite takeaways from this book is that by attempting to copy our favorite artist and most likely failing at it, we'll find our own unique style. For instance, has this type of video ever been done before? Of course, there's probably hundreds or thousands of videos like this one. But what makes it unique is that I'm sharing my own perspective by sharing with you my personal book recommendations. All right, so that would be my final recommendation. As always, you'll find the links to all the books in the description down below. If you like this video, make sure you check out this other video right here where I talk about the books that have most changed my life. Thanks for watching, happy new year, and see you in the next one.